of just a review or it's an insult. Um, so we're on the third day, we need to lighten the load a little bit. So we'll be out there for about an hour and 15 minutes. It's all jogged through. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to it in terms of that we get to basically two spot everything. So everybody's going to get a bunch of reps. Uh, it's just, it's going to be about 50% speed. Matt, could you describe the, comp you know, while you're installing a playbook and you're getting a lot of new players acclimated to the routine and training camp, what the competition period is in these practices? Yeah, yeah just, there's different theme each, each day in terms of what, we, what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, but I, I do think there's a lot of benefit in terms of you can feel the intensity kind of raise up a little bit. Guys are, are talking a little bit more trash to one another, and that naturally heightens the intensity. And um, these guys want to compete. And we, we're competing in every period, but we just have a, a consequence for, for the loser that doesn't win the competition period. Including myself, I'm always the loser, so. <laughs> Means you have to do up-downs? Yes. Push-ups, whatever. Whatever whatever the guys decide. Who chooses the punishment? Well, uh, yesterday we called on uh, Dre and Aaron Jones, and they came up with it, so. Yeah, Bobby wasn't very happy with somebody. He said he wasn't going up enough. I think I mean, he was joking. He was killing uh, yeah. somebody. I don't know. Steno was getting after it, though. Was he? I expect our, our coaches got to be the models, so. Um, on the cutbacks or practice day, how do we get to this point where, I mean, you were part of two days, both as a player and young and as an assistant coach, um, and now we're here on day three and you feel the need to taper it back. How, I'm not trying to be negative or criticizing this, but there's got to be a, a theory to the, to the reason behind it. So what, so why? Yeah, why? yeah, I think there's just so much information now, and, um, you know, you can use it however you want, and. Certainly, there's, there's definitely some benefit to try to power and through, but I, I firmly believe that for us to be at our best, we need everybody available. And so it kind of mitigates the risk of injury a little bit. And, uh, and I still think as long as our guys are intentional about their work, you can still get a lot out of the periods and a lot out of the practice. Um, you know, and there'll be a time to kind of push through, especially in the next couple of weeks. So tomorrow is a padded practice, but are you going to do no, this tomorrow? No, we can't, we cannot do it for the first four days, so. So pads on Monday then? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Matt, there's been kind of a controversy whether, it, you know, teams should pay running backs or not. I'm not talking contracts uh, specifically with you, but when it comes to production for that position, the running backs, how valuable is that when it comes to your team? Well, I think you've seen it with our guys, and, you know, we're pretty fortunate for the backs that we have, and um, everybody's going to have a different theory on and philosophy for how they value that position, and, um, yeah, that's, I don't really have a ton to say on it, to be honest with you. Matt, Matt, what differences have you seen physically and or mentally with Zach Tom as he starts year two here? Well, there's, there's always a... a hopefully a, a huge jump for these guys in terms of their knowledge of what is expected of them and you know just getting a feel for how the the opposition um, you know just some of the moves or whatever it may be the techniques that the D linemen are using and so hopefully Zach is feels a lot more comfortable I think he's looked pretty good the first couple of days and he's got to continue to do that I mean we're only two days in in camp and uh, but I think you know, the one thing that I can say about Zach is, and we saw it last year, the moment was never too big for him. I mean, he got called up in, in pregame twice of, hey, buddy, you're starting. And, um, you know, there was no flinch to his game at whatsoever. He went out there and he competed, and I thought he did a pretty good job. When you have a new quarterback, obviously you want to make everything as comfortable for him as possible. Does that accelerate how quickly you'd like to have this right tackle starting position? sealed and, and, and know who that's going to be? I, I, th I think you got to let, let it happen naturally, let it happen organically, and hopefully that the way the schedule's set up now with having two weeks before, you know, from the last preseason game to your first game, um, hopefully that give, gives us enough time. And these guys, we're, we're doing, a, um, you know, a lot of shuffling of the offensive line. So, um, you know, I think there's enough time basically to, to figure it out along the way. 
Bakhtiari probably missing practice regularly. Is Diamond going to get enough work at right tackle, or will you change on who fills in for Bakhtiari on different days? Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be totally fluid. We, we, you guys know, and you've seen it. We want to cross train these guys as much as possible. It just gives us so much more flexibility to put put out who we feel like is going to give us the best opportunity to win games, and so it, it kind of naturally happens. And I feel like everywhere I've been. You know, you try to give as many guys opportunities in different spots and just see how they respond to those situations. Bless you. Matt, how fortunate are you, okay. how fortunate are you uh, to have Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and that type of leadership in that running back room? Oh, extremely fortunate. I think it, it starts, you know, with, with Ben Sermons and the expectations and standards he holds that room to, and those guys have embraced that from day one. And... From the moment I got here, you know, I've been with Aaron Jones every year that, that I've been here. And um, it's been fun to watch him mature, not only as a football player, but as a, as a person. And just the leadership that he brings to our football team, not only as uh, by his actions, but now by his words. And um, he backs it up every time he steps out on the field. We saw Jair Alexander getting some medical attention. Was it just cramps yesterday, or is there any concern there? Yeah, there's no concern. And I felt really good when I saw him backpedaling after practice. Um, Josiah's been a valuable role player for the last couple of years. Is there a potential bigger role? I'm not saying a featured receiver, but more of a hand in the ball kind of guy? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. I think, you know, he, he's a guy that has a lot of versatility in, in terms of um, whether he's in the backfield, whether he's in a wing position, we can split him out. Um, so it's just. You know, him getting those opportunities and then taking advantage of them. I don't know if you contacted Zach Taylor after Joe went down yesterday, but how does that change things going into the, the joint practices in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I've had no co uh, communication with Zach. I shot him a text and just said, I hope, you know, your QB is okay. Um, and certainly we're looking forward to him being in there. I mean, he's one of the elite quarterbacks in the National Football League. and. I just love how the guy competes, and we saw it firsthand. I want to say, was it two years ago when we played him? I just, he is as tough as they come. I just, I, I remember that one shot he took. I thought he was definitely going to be out of the game, and then he's he's in there the next series, and I was like, man, they don't make too many guys like this. So certainly, I hope he's okay, because I, I mean, uh, you never want to see that with any with any player, uh, let alone a guy like uh, the stature of, of Joe Burrow. Two more, please. Tyler Goodson yesterday was doing some of the jet sweep stuff and out wide. Do you see him in maybe sort of a similar role to what he did with Tyler Irvin in the past? And is that, you know, just kind of an opportunity to get him on the field more potentially? Yeah, potentially. I think, um, you know, we're going to experiment with a lot of these guys and see who, who can adapt and adjust and give us the best opportunity to move the ball down the field. And um, I, I just think that philosophically, the more you can do as a player, uh, that they definitely enhances your chances of making our football team and making an impact on our team. What have you seen from Malik Heath uh, this summer, whether it was OTs or mini camp and now in training camp? Well, he's done a lot of great things. Um, you, you see it. He's, he's really, he's a strong, strong football player. Um, he can run through contact. He does a good job of, of releasing off the line of scrimmage and widening corners when he's getting press coverage, just ripping through. Um, you know, he's, he's got really good ball skills and he's a bigger guy. So I think Malik's shown us what he can do. And now it's about the consistency of which he does it because, um, like, like all these young players and like any player, it's, it's all about that. Just how consistently can you do it down in and down out. And, um, you know, he had a situation yesterday where, you know, he run, ran the wrong route, and he kind of put his head down. I'm like, dude, you, you, you can't worry about that. Mistakes are going to happen. It's all about how you respond. But I think he is a talented young player, a guy that we really look forward to, to putting in some, some situations and see how he responds in the game.